Hi, I'm Trevor Johnson, and welcome back to our final course for our Lab Kitchen Mother's Day special. This last course is a crispy potato eggs benedict with a red pepper hollandaise. So the first thing we want to do is get our potatoes cooked. So I just have a peeled russet potato, and I just want to cut it in four equal pieces. You don't want uh, long skinny wedges. You want to you want to keep our pieces nice and thick because what we're gonna do later is press them down into patties that will serve as our English muffin replacement. So I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna get them in a pot. A big couple pinches of salt and some baking soda. And I'm gonna cover them with cold water. medium heat. So while our potatoes cook, I'm going to start on our sauce. So traditional hollandaise is made from egg yolks and butter. It's extremely rich, extremely delicious, but I want a lighter take. So to get that same consistency, we're just going to take this white onion and we're going to slice it. What the onion does is it brings um, the same creamy consistency once they're stewed for a long time, but without the calories, and it's a little bit of a brighter flavor. A lot of people ask me, how do I cut onions without tearing up? And the truth is, it's usually a matter of luck. Sometimes the onion vapors reach your eyes, sometimes they don't. I find, um, Breathing through your mouth helps. So in our sauce pot here, I have a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and a quarter teaspoon of chili flakes. Chili oil is also a great choice here because that peppery flavor really works well with the, with the red peppers. And to those onions, I'm also gonna add four cloves of peeled garlic. Just want to get all those onions nice and coated in that, in that oil. So when you cook onions for a long time, you break down their that, that sharp flavor they have. They develop a really intense sweetness and a really creamy texture once they're blended. And we're going to use that texture as a replacement for our egg yolks and our butter. So those onions, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. As well as about a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Just get that all nice and mixed. So the goal with these onions is just a nice long sweating process. We don't really want to caramelize them because we don't want that deep of a sweet flavor. Um, we just want the creamy texture that you get from onions that have been broken down from a long cooking process. So I got those on medium high heat and we're just going to let them hang out. Meanwhile we can get our red pepper ready. So a little trick with red peppers, or any pepper really, cut the tops and bottoms off, give you a nice even surface, and then cut down one side, kind of open it up with your knife, and just roll it while slicing your knife. And that way, you don't get seeds everywhere. So once you're at this part, you can just cut it into pieces and we just want a nice smallish dice. Doesn't matter how exact you are because this sauce is going into the blender. That's how we're gonna get it nice and creamy.
Okay, so our peppers are ready to go. Just keep stirring those onions. You don't have to chop the garlic. It's actually better to keep the garlic whole because if you were to chop it up, the garlic would likely burn before you get that nice soft texture you want in your onions. So you want to keep it whole so they cook around the same, the same amount of time. So I've got two large eggs that I have cracked separately into containers. And what you want to do is take the egg and get a small strainer and just gently pour the egg into the strainer and just give it a little shake. So what the shake is doing is just getting rid of some of the excess uh, or loose egg white. That way you get a nice a nice round poached shape when you push the egg. So after that drip stops, transfer it into a bowl. See the difference? See how it's got that nice, kind of perfect uniform circular shape? Do the same thing with the other ones. Some might drip less than others and that's okay. The smell is terrific. It's got a nice, get a nice bright peppery flavor. Nice peppery smell. A little smoky texture, smoky flavor from those uh, smoked paprika. So when you start seeing some brown color, that's when you want to turn your heat down to about medium and just continue stirring. Remember, we're not trying to caramelize, we're just trying to soften. There's some dry spices in here and some of, and um, the spices might start to darken a little bit, that's okay. You just want to make sure you minimize the darkening as much as possible. And you do that by constantly stirring. Looks like we're just about there. You see how these onions are starting to 
look a little translucent, like almost see-through. So at that point, we can add our red pepper, as well as our sherry vinegar. If you don't have sherry vinegar, uh, apple cider vinegar, rice wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, all of those work great. And also about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Give that a good stir. Get everything nice and coated. Then you can add either your water or your stock. I'm using water. Depending on the size of your pepper, you might need to add a little more water. Okay, now we're just gonna let this simmer. Let all those vegetables break down and stew together. That's how you build flavor. Make sure your potatoes aren't boiling. If you start seeing it boil, then make sure you turn the heat down. We, don't, we want the potatoes to cook nice and evenly. And you do that by starting in cold water and bringing it up to a gentle simmer and just letting them simmer. Okay, so it's time to check on our sauce. You are looking for your peppers to be nice and tender. You should be able to break them up with your spatula or spoon. So those are ready for the blender. Let's also check in our potatoes. Nice and fork tender. Some of you are probably wondering about the baking soda that I added. What baking soda does is it helps break down the starch a little bit more so that you get more of a crusty exterior when you fry the potato. So I'm going to turn these off, drain them. And after those are drained, I'm just going to let them hang out on our cutting board. same potato pot, we can rinse it out, fill it with some more water, and get that ready to poach our eggs. So for egg poaching, you want to fill your pot with about halfway with water. Add about a tablespoon of vinegar. And what the vinegar does is the acid kind of helps cook the egg a little faster. So you don't get as much of the runny white. You get a nice, a nicer shape egg. A pinch of salt. So we're just gonna bring that up to a, a simmer. While we're waiting for that, we're going to make our sauce. Get all of that deliciousness in the blender.
notice what I'm looking for when I'm blending is when you first put things in the blender, you'll see kind of particles of food floating towards the top. And you wanna blend until you see nothing but a nice consistent color. So let's pop the lid and give this a check. That's beautiful. Nice and creamy. Give it a taste. Delicious. So our sauce is done. I'm just gonna pour it in a small sauce pot. And let that stay warm while we finish the rest of our dish. So our potatoes, we want to flatten them into, dish, into discs to serve as a nice base our eggs. So I'm just going to cover these with plastic wrap. I'm going to take a nice wide mug and just kind of gently but firmly press them down. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You just want a nice even flat shape. You can kind of use your fingers to stabilize the sides so you don't get too much of an irregular shape. Discard that broken one. I'm doing now, I'm going to heat up our saute pan, some grapeseed oil, and get ready to fry these. You want to have your pan heated up on medium high. Okay, so our pan is nice and hot. So we're ready to start crisping up our potatoes. Just want to take a nice a spatula as to not break up the potato. Try to fry these two at a time. It's okay if they break up. They'll still get a nice crisp. So while that's going, we can start on our eggs. So, to poach these eggs, you want to take a slotted spoon. Just slowly pour them one by one into your simmering water. And once that water is simmering, turn the heat off and set a timer four minutes. That way it'll cook through nice and evenly without having to worry about burning. And you can focus on your potato. So what you're looking for is a nice caramelization on your potato. Again, don't worry if they break up, they'll still be equally delicious. You see this golden color that's creeping up the sides here. That's how you know when it's ready to flip. So ideally you would use a nice spatula or if you want to show off for mom, try a little flick of the wrist. And just let those crisp up on the opposite side. So we can get our garnish ready. 
with some nice fresh chives. I'm gonna slice them nice and thin for a good presentation. Again, don't panic if they broke apart. Just kind of form them back into a disc. You won't even notice with that beautiful sauce we made slathered all over it. Just kind of get two nice, somewhat circular size shapes. Okay. And now we just patiently wait for our eggs. If if mom is patient with us. Make sure to season your potatoes with a small pinch of salt. So four minutes is the time that we use for a perfectly runny egg yolk. If you like your egg yolks a little more thicker, a little thicker, then you can go five minutes or six minutes. That's just personal preference. So see that drainage that we did earlier? There's still a little bit of white, but had we not done that, there would have been a lot more. So those are about done. So using my slotted spoon, I'm going to just let these rest on a paper towel. And while there is a resting, I'll heat up my Canadian bacon in that same pan we fried the potatoes in. I also like to season our poached eggs with some olive oil and a pinch of salt. You just want a nice, quick sear in your Canadian bacon. Regular bacon works as well, but I think Canadian bacon is just nicer because it's a little leaner. You've already got a quick, quick, rich, quick, rich dish. Also, when Canadian bacon is fried, it kind of creates this nice bowl that our egg can sit perfectly in. Those are ready to go. So we got our potato base, got our ham, got our perfectly poached and seasoned eggs. We're now gonna top with our beautiful red pepper faux hollandaise. But trust me, it is every bit as delicious. And 
Look at that. Same creamy texture. A fraction of the calories. Just finish that up with a nice dusting of chopped chives. You want to get really fancy now with drizzle of olive oil. And there, your Mother's Day is complete. Three delicious dishes. And let's try this out. Oh, look at that. Nice, creamy egg center. Make sure mom gets a perfect bite. Some of that ham, sauce, potato. Mom's gonna like this. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope your mothers have a wonderful day and I hope you got inspired by some of these recipes you saw. And on behalf of the Lab Kitchen, thanks for joining us.